Current assignment. What assignment? Bess and I are flying to New Orleans for a long weekend of fabulous music, sightseeing, and food. Okay, so I'm also going to visit Ned's friend, Henry Bollet, but only as a favor to Ned. Apparently, Henry's uncle just died, and he had to go down there for a couple of weeks. Ned says Henry's a nice guy, but kind of a loner who might appreciate a little company. So, the first thing I'll do is leave Bess at our hotel in the French Quarter and take a cab out to the mansion where Henry's staying. Ned called him and said I'd be coming. But once that's done, it'll be lazy les bon temps brûlés. <laughs> the only bad news is the weather's not supposed to be that great this weekend. But what's a little stormy weather when you're in the heart of the Big Easy, right? Right. The skull is mine. It wants to be mine. Yes, I did my share of scheming to get it. I got Dr. Bollet to go to the authenticators, then switched the letter they wrote saying it was real with one I wrote saying it was fake, in hopes that Dr. Bollet would just hand it over to me. Yes, my plan failed, and yet, here we are. I have the skull. Why? Because it knows that I will fulfill its destiny. Henry is a fool. If he ever got his hands on this, he would just turn around and give it to that trashy girlfriend of his. Dr. Bollet, he just wanted it because he was terrified of dying. Gilbert Buford, too. And that Lamont fella, he just wants to sell it to the highest bidder. But me, my motives are pure. I am going to protect it so it can rendezvous with all those other skulls. I'm going to be right there when they start conversing. And all the mysteries of the universe are forever solved. Henry is a fool. If he ever got his hands on this, he would just turn around and give it to that trashy girlfriend of his. Dr. Bollet, he just wanted it because he was terrified of dying. Gilbert Buford, too. And that Lamont fella, he just wants to sell it to the highest bidder. But me, my motives are pure. I am going to protect it so it can rendezvous with all those other skulls. I'm going to be right there when they start conversing, and all the mysteries of the universe are forever solved. Ah! No! 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 Come back! Bye now. Nancy? That you in there? Goodness sakes, gal, what on earth have you gone and done? Here, I'll pull you up. Toss what you're holding up here, then give me your hands. Come on, you best hurry. The crystal skull. After all that scheming, how do I finally get it? Why, this nice little Yankee gal just hands it to me. Thank you, Nancy. Bye now. Nancy, welcome to my little lantern-lit corner of the world. Something else? What? That was quick. You bring me that Coco Kringle bar like I asked? Did you pick me those mushrooms yet? Hello again. I don't mind. No one should mind the rain. Without it, the end of the world would come much too soon. I do indeed. Herbs, mostly. And because I'm in constant need of them, I grow them in pots. I don't use these herbs for cooking, darling. Did you and Henry have a nice chat? Henry's a very morose, very negative young man. Very cunning, too. In fact, I'm fairly certain that he's been selling off Dr. Bollet's belongings on the sly. According to Dr. Bollet's will, Henry is to get 30% of the estate. Dr. Bollet's physician, Gilbert Buford, gets 30%. Our Lady of Route 57 School of Dentistry and Cosmetology gets 30%, and I am to receive 10%. Just little things, odds and ends, really. But the lawyers made it very clear that no assets were to be liquidated until all of Dr. Bollet's affairs are settled. I'm here because Dr. Bollet paid me in advance, and I always fulfill my obligations. Never you mind. It was just a little remedy I brewed up on the spot to help you feel better. It's a mystery to me. I suggest you ask Henry. He leaves things lying around all the time. I guess he figures I won't notice amid all the other clutter. But I do. I notice everything. How else may I be of service to you? No, he never so much as mentioned a crystal skull, whispering or otherwise. That is a very good question. I first noticed the canvas was missing after the reception following Dr. Bollet's funeral. But as for why it was missing, I do not know. Very little, I'm afraid. 
I didn't notice the picture was gone until after the reception following Dr. Bolay's funeral. I cannot even tell you what it was a picture of. Things. Secret things. Things that give me special talents when special times demand them. People usually laugh when I say this. But this pouch is my connection to the energy that powers the universe. Well, at least you didn't laugh. I was indeed. I was in the library cleaning when all of a sudden I heard a big thump. I hurried out to investigate, and sure enough, there was Dr. Bolay lying by the front door. And as I rushed over to him, the door opened and in walked Gilbert Buford. He took one look at Dr. Bolay and hollered at me to call 911. So I ran back into the library and did just that. I assume he saw Gilbert coming and was going to open the door for him. Not that there was any need. As you yourself discovered, people around here seldom lock their front doors during the day. But you know, I suppose it's possible. The mail does come about then. But I helped remove the body, and I surely don't recall seeing any letter. In the back of my mind, I have always wondered about Gilbert Buford showing up at the door at that exact moment. Well, it's a good thing Gilbert Buford is mostly retired, because it would appear he's no longer driving on a full set of radials, if you know what I mean. That man never met a creature he didn't like. He'd train them to do all kinds of silly tricks, then let them run free, inside the house as well as out. My analysis showed that the skull, while made of remarkably pure crystal, was carved using modern instruments. In layman's terms, the skull is a fake. All right. Dr. Bolay told me about the skull. As you said, he believed with all his might owning that skull was the reason he was still going strong at 95. I lied to you because, well, for one thing, Dr. Bolay swore me to secrecy. And for another, he kept the skull hidden. And up until just this minute, I wanted to be the one who found it. Getting the skull tested was my idea. When Dr. Bolay told me about it, I was skeptical and that troubled him. So I helped him find a private laboratory where we could take it so any and all doubts would be dispelled once and for all. I certainly did not anticipate that the truth would result in his keeling over and dying like that. None whatsoever. Oh my, this makes me feel just terrible. You see, well... Now that I, too, know that the skulls are fake, I can stop fretting over its whereabouts. In fact, I should probably thank you and Iggy for setting me straight. Don't have any chalk, but I certainly have paper. Gracious, you are the picture of impatience, aren't you? Well, I appreciate the offer. But here, why don't you just take this instead? It's an extra key to my room. The paper's in a drawer in my nightstand. I have to keep it hidden on account of that paper-thieving iguana. Just go on up and help yourself. But make sure you lock the door when you leave, you hear? You I trust. But Henry? Him I do not. It's an extra key to my room. The paper's in a drawer in my nightstand. Just go on up and help yourself. But make sure you lock the door when you leave, you hear? You I trust. But Henry? Him I do not. And long as you're going up there, my appetite could use a little placating. So I would be much obliged if you would bring me a candy bar from my nightstand. And take one for yourself while you're at it. I surely do not. I never cared to learn. Don't get me wrong. I like Dr. Bolay. I truly did. But I swear, sometimes his activities made as much sense to me as bathing in a bayou full of gators. I most certainly do. But it's up in my room, and I'm afraid I cannot retrieve it for you until I'm finished here. You get the sudden urge to draw a picture? Bless you. I'm so hungry I could devour these plants I'm potting up, dirt and all. Dr. Bolay took great interest in that shovel. Don't know why. He never used it. Just like to see it hanging there. Me, I use it to dig up roots. No, I mean roots like tannus, black cohosh, valerian. Roots that in the right hands are very special. Very powerful. However... Right now, I need mushrooms. I was hoping to get them picked tonight, but from the looks of all this potting I still have to do, why, what a generous offer. All right, then. Dried and crushed, they comprise the main ingredients in one of my tonics. Tell you what, 
I need five painted conks. They're mushrooms that have got a short, fat stem and a large, bell-shaped cap covered with big red dots. You might find one or two here in the garden, but you'll have better luck in the boggy part of the cemetery. You get me five, no more, no less, and I'll let you borrow that shovel. You can put them in this bag. Well, bless your heart, you did it. Oh, my. I forgot to warn you about Bernard, didn't I? He's another one of Dr. Bolet's pets. He'd kick that log to get Bernie's attention, then feed him marshmallows. Problem is, now that gator leaps up and snaps every time someone so much as touches that log. I should have said something, but I've gotten so used to Bernie, I just plain forgot. Anyway, feel free to help yourself to that shovel. You earned it. That would be my boat. Comes in very handy when I need to forage for certain swamp-dwelling plants. I did. Fact of the matter is, there's a spirit living in that wall. Got a voice that it sends shivers down the spine of Dracula himself. Used to hear it sometimes, in the dead of night, half talking, half whispering, saying this one word I never heard before, like it was from a language no one on earth spoke. And suddenly, I knew. The spirit was trying to cast a spell on me, so I got me a book and found out that by painting the word I heard on the wall, syllable by syllable, in hoodoo signs, I could counteract the word's power. And you know what? The spirit has not spoken that word or any other since. Darling, a sack full of water moccasins couldn't get me to say that word out loud. Nor will I write it down, no sir. Not ever, ever, ever. Absolutely not. When I came back out, Gilbert was leaning over Dr. Bolet listening for breathing, I suppose, and then he started pushing up and down on his chest, but it was too late. Even I could tell that Dr. Bolet was gone. Well, now, seems to me he did say he had a dog once, way back when he was a young'un, but when it comes to its name, I'm afraid I'm no help at all. One more thing. Take care, hon. Come see me any time. Fare the well. Thanks for coming by. I, too, have seen the skeleton man. After Dr. Bolet passed, that night, I saw him in the hallway. He was there, then he was gone. So you best be careful, Nancy Drew, because if it was Mr. Death, and I truly think it was, he's come back. I'm afraid not. No? Yes. I don't see why not. Testing, one, two, three, testing. Testing, one, two, three, testing. Is this thing on? <laughs> testing, one, two, three, testing. Talk about a detective's dream come true. The Italian police called me personally and requested that I travel to Italy and help them stake out a suspected thief in Venice. Unfortunately, what started out as a simple assignment in a city filled with canals, gondolas, and romance quickly morphed into a full-fledged undercover operation and I soon found myself trapped in a maze of lies, disguises, and danger. Help me find my way out by joining me in my next adventure, Phantom of Venice. Talk about a detective's dream come true. The Italian police called me personally and requested that I travel to Italy and help them stake out a suspected thief in Venice. Unfortunately, what started out as a simple assignment in a city filled with canals, gondolas, and romance quickly morphed into a full-fledged undercover operation, and I soon found myself trapped in a maze of lies, disguises, and danger. Help me find my way out by joining me in my next adventure. We're sorry, your call cannot be completed as dialed. Please check the number and dial again. This is a recording. You have reached a recording. Regretfully, it seems you have made an error while engaging your party. Please disconnect, check the number, then dial again. Uh, D do ka lu mu pa sa